Many New York lawmakers are condemning a pro-Palestinian rally that was held at Times Square on Sunday after Hamas militants operated a deadly attack on Israel over the weekend that we've discussed at great length today and yesterday on the show. Now, this backlash toward the rally was due in part to videos circulating on social media that showed speakers at this rally announcing the number of rockets launched into Israel by Hamas and the crowd appearing to cheer as a result. Just note we don't have permission to air this video, but we did watch it ourselves. The rally was promoted but not organized by the New York City chapter of the Democratic Socialist of America. Card-carrying member, New York Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, commented on the rally, saying, The bigotry and callousness expressed in Times Square on Sunday were unacceptable and harmful in this devastating moment. It also did not speak for the thousands of New Yorkers who are capable of rejecting both Hamas's horrifying attacks against innocent civilians, as well as the grave injustices and violence Palestinians face under occupation. And New York Governor Kathy Hochul condemned everyone involved, according to Politico, and spoke at a We Stand with Israel rally in Albany. Now, according to Politico, New York City's DSA Steering Committee member Nadia Tykolsker said the group promoted the event at the request of a coalition partner because we believe in equality and justice for all Palestinians and Israelis. We know that war will take more lives. The group opposes harming and targeting civilians, she added. It is shameful that politicians in our state are exploiting this moment to target a socialist organization and divide the vibrant left in New York. Yeah, leftists are frustrated. That's not the right word. Very disappointed and angry at AOC for making these remarks. And I can understand why. The video that we're unable to play does have a uh, speaker at the event um, talking about not the death of civilians or anything that is a, a war crime, but talking about the value of a resistance. And as we talked at length about on the show, part of the issue is that there's been a Pied Piper effort by people like Benjamin Netanyahu to make sure that secular, um, non-militant groups don't have uh, can't survive or don't exist anymore in any real meaningful way. That's probably an overstatement, but are, have been suppressed in Palestine, leading to the rise of Hamas, who, uh, you know, extremists in Israel see as a, a good uh, bet noir to focus uh, attacks in the killing of Palestinian civilians that has been going on for years without hardly any notice from the mainstream media. Uh, the, the occupied status of Palestine, of Palestine has been recognized by almost every country except for America and its Western European allies. And it is true under uh, international law that occupied peoples have a right to resist. Now, they do not have a right to target and kill civilians. The right to resist of an occupied people is still contingent on the boundaries of other kinds of international law, including prohibitions against targeting and killing civilians. And if anybody at that rally did that, they absolutely should be condemned. I mean, they were, but that's not what we saw in the clip. Not, they were cheering the indiscriminate firing of rockets into Israel. It was a pro-Hamas rally. It was a, clearly a, that, a rally in true. support of the violent actions taken by a terrorist it's organization. It is absolutely it was a, it was, accurate was, for AOC to denounce it, obviously. Okay. It, was a, it was not a pro-peace rally. It was you, want, a you, rally. Should have, you can have a pro-peace rally. It's not a pro-peace rally. It's a, it's a rally in, in— I know it's in, not a pro-peace rally. In that would be of the op to do. ongoing occupation of Palestine. That's not, it's not peace to return to what was going on a week ago. There are two million people, half of whom are children, who are living in an open-air prison where not all, but some— Israeli citizens regularly dump trash on the, their rain on them from the sky. Like 90 plus percent of the water supply is tainted. There is an, 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 a, a, an, over, a confluent, uh, um, an abundance of liver diseases because of the polluted nature of the, of the water in the area. The entire pop, half the population is food insecure. Half the population is unemployed. Over half the population uh, is unemployed. Sure, and they're in an open and air a prison. terrorist group just so, yes, dragged a, people from their homes to be used as hostages. And, and these is, people are applauding it. No, they don't. I just just literally spent three minutes explaining that that video, which we cannot play, does not do any such thing. Now, if there's some other part of the video that was not captured, where people were saying it's good to kill civilians, AOC should and everyone should condemn that. But applauding yeah, well, a resistance— I don't, I don't support Hamas's military— Actions again. Nor do I support the Israeli government occupation. And, and you can be and against both and things, and that would be, I think, a but great subject for a rally to have. That's not sitting, what they're sitting doing. around saying we're against both things, but we don't support people's right to resist the oppression that you say performatively that you're ex against is exactly the problem. And we see Hochul and the rest of these New York representatives going to 
Israel, pro-Israel rallies. They've never once in their life gone to a pro-Palestine rally. They've never once in their life used the words and their, their platform and their privilege to articulate the harms that have been ongoing against Palestinians. On the front page of the New York Times a few days ago, the New York Times used a graphic, I hope we can throw it up, used a graphic that illustrated how more people had been, how more Israelis had been killed over the weekend than in the last many years period, making the case about how horrible the events of the weekend were. That is true. It is also true that same chart plots Palestinian deaths. And what you can see unremarked upon by the graphic I'm not itself light of the is the enormous deaths. volume. But at any one instance, any one day of Palestinian death, uh, several, uh, several points on the chart dwarfs the number of deaths that happened over this weekend of Israeli citizens. Again, that is not to minimize the illegal and immoral nature of targeting and killing civilians. But it is rich to say, I'm sorry, after you have an occupied people in that condition, in those conditions for years, to say they shouldn't, that, that there's not an, an, a desire to celebrate a resistance. The, the words that were used in that clip was celebrating I mean, a resistance which is legal that, under well, international law. And now their civilians are dying, their buildings are being destroyed in retaliatory strikes. What is there to celebrate? What is there to cheer? What is there to be happy about here? I don't understand it. I don't. I think that's, this is I mean, a very sad weekend. That's evident. I think there's a lot of. I, I think the, the 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 deaths on both sides of this conflict are horrible. I think the policies of the Israeli government and Benjamin Netanyahu need a lot of immediate scrutiny, and I'm glad they're getting scrutiny, and they've deserved them for a long time. Scrutiny? They've gotten the full-fledged well, support of the United States and all of well, the West. I, well, how many times the White House, have I said they shouldn't have that? The White House is bathed in blue and white in support of Israel, and not a mumbling word has been said about the precious lives of, of Palestinians that have been lost, not just over the weekend, and not just as a result of the retaliatory strike, I don't, where Benjamin Netanyahu and that leading Some people are unwilling to talk about, about the, la the loss of lives among Palestinians, and other people are unwilling to talk people, about the loss of lives among Israel. Israelis. Those people include people like Kathy Hochul and New York leadership who will grandstand and condemn uh, a speaker at an event without saying a mumbling word about the underlying righteousness of the cause of Palestinian res resistance. If she had said something like that, and if AOC, frankly, who has said things like that in the past, but apparently not in this context, then they wouldn't be getting the flack that they're getting right now. Another thing I will say is that I've attended these kinds of rallies where people just will, sh like, you're invi they're inviting people from various groups up to podiums, mm -hmm. and it's a catch as catch can. I went to some rallies over um, uh, after the Dobbs hearing in front of the White House, listening to what people had to say, and they are can be very ad hoc. I'm sure you remember during the women's protest, Madonna got in a bunch of trouble for saying something like, Let's burn it all down. Something like let's well, burn sure. the White I mean, House. Something she was like that. Really criticized for that. I mean, I'm right. thinking of the. But that doesn't the, that doesn't mean that everyone at the rally endorsed well, endorses sure, that. Obviously not. Even though, even though people cheered because they were mad about Trump or whatever, that isn't. It's not necessarily as literal as people are trying to make I it. I think up. this way. You remember the rally? There was a rally for peace in the Ukraine Russia conflict that uh, some people who appeared on our show spoke at. I believe again, my oh, former co-host Kim war, Iverson. Well, anti-war rally. Right, but there were some. Yeah. There was criticism that I think was deserved. Not of the entire rally. But if there was a the, like a there was a pro-Russian element that was not appropriate because this should be a rally about peace. And well, I would similarly think I remember well, controversy there was a Russian RFK flag. Jr. And I remember controversy around there was um, con Scott Ritter. There was controversy around a, who didn't a group end up speaking. Um, who had a, who were waving like a Russian flag, who were not for peace but in support of a Russian victory in the conflict. I don't know, man. I, I I'm I'm really struggling with this because. Again, if there's a longer video, but the clip that we watched in advance of this was someone saying, resist, I, I, I'm happy, I'm from an occupied people, excited about the prospect of resistance actually liberating us from the open air prison we've been living in for generations. And this, this whole discourse does have the feel that even the both sideism of, of, of killing everybody is wrong, obviously killing civilians is always wrong, but there is a way that a, a Israeli retaliation is considered to be justified because it is militarized, because I'm it's wrapped it's in. Justified. I'm not talking about anything. Nothing. Let me caveat. All that's about to come out of my mouth is not a reflection on anything that you, Robbie Suave, have ever said or <laughs> believed. But the media coverage and the response that you're seeing from politicians seems to understand that a state. How many times do we say this? Israel has a right to defend itself. Israel has the right to defend itself. But at no point, despite the clear 
edict of international law are those words used in reference to Palestine and Palestine's right to defend itself. And what international law makes clear is that if there has been a good faith effort for peaceful resolution, that actual revolution, that armed militant revolution is justified. I'm reading, um, uh, you know, it's Historical evidence, this is from an, an explainer from a, a law school about Palestinian law. Historical evidence overwhelmingly supports that self-determination is rarely achieved without the use of force and armed struggle. And of course, we all have the right to self-determination. Failing to acknowledge resistant movements would lead to an illogical situation. Alien occupations would go unchallenged, rendering any resistance to illegal, um, sorry, rendering nil mm -hmm. any resistance to the illegal status itself. I mean, people have to wrestle with that. And there's going to be messiness as people celebrate after decades of inaction and decades of their own people, including children, being killed and, yes, targeted. Remember, this is a population that's literally 50 percent children, that this looks like a, a movement in some direction that's, that's different than the status quo. I guess I would approach it from the realm of what are the practical effects. I find it very unlikely that... Um, even, even it, it, being as maximally charitable to the to Hamas, I guess that this is some liberatory effort. I find it very unlikely this is going to result in improved conditions for Palestinians. In fact, the the immediate result is widespread destruction and in that's Palestine. Right. Targeting so this uh, is not a good idea. White phosphorus, which is a, another <clears throat> war crime. Yeah, I agree. But that that to me is I feel the same way about these immigration discussions. That, to me, is evidence of how bad conditions are that people are willing to make those kinds of take those kinds of risks. If you, I mean, I'm sorry. It's like it's like telling. I don't mean to be, I don't I don't mean to be this person, but it's like telling someone who's about to try to escape escape their slave plantation. Well, if you get caught, they're going to beat you and your family and maybe kill you too and chop off your leg. Well, hell's bells. So at some point, it's worth it to flee because you don't want to be a GD slave for the rest of your life. You don't want your children taken away from you. You don't want generations of your family to be subject to that mm -hmm. kind of oppression. And that seems, I think, obvious to a lot of people who are really wrapping their brains around the level of oppression that's ongoing in Palestine. But if you don't, if you're not coming from that perspective, if you're not, if you haven't been paying attention to what's been going on in Palestine until, I'm sorry, until Israeli lives were the ones that were implicated in this, and those precious Israeli lives should not have been taken. Innocent civilians should uh, the, killing them is a hate crime. Uh, so, sorry, is a okay. is a so war we can crime. have we can have social change, maybe possibly as a result of years, decades, centuries of violent struggle, or hopefully we can have social change as a result of nonviolent protest when, when and has that civil been successful? disobedience and that when has did been that successful. Work? That's ridiculous, there's a, Robbie. There's a history of Nobody's sitting here saying that America should have peacefully wave, wo woven signs at the British until they left us alone. I mean, Nobody's saying most that we countries should have just abolished slavery not as a result of a ours violence. Ours didn't. Ours <laughs> didn't, but most of them abolished slavery as a result of a no. democratic process no. and it, a that is also not true. There were people there were a slave uprising. It's, the Haitian rebellion was a a It's a, the killing of every non black person on the island. No, they didn't kill every non black person on the island. They killed their oppressors and very notably right. declined to kill the Polish population there. Right. We, can have, in solidarity we can have medieval with their violence movement. among groups that dislike each it's other for called, forever, or we can have it's only called medieval violence and barbarism when it's historically black and brown people and historically marginalized groups who are rising up against their colonial oppressors. No, it's called medieval violence exactly when people are being dragged people from their homes and taking hostages, which has rightly outraged everyone, including AOC. And was it medieval violence when, as we discussed yesterday with our guest, who tried to say it was barbaric for Palestinians to be keeping Israelis in cages, not realizing that the footage he was talking about was Palestinian babies of in cages. Of course it was barbaric. He, but he did not. He would not acknowledge that. Oh. He would not turn around and use those words. Those words, Ed, Edward Said's entire oeuvre is dedicated to this exact principle. That that that, that Orientalism, that, that, that characterizing certain populations in certain terms has been used as a technique, a technique since time immemorial to justify d harm, violence against them that is not seen right. as legitimate when it's against white people. Right now, violence against a group is being justified. It is being literally justified. Violence against the Israelis is no, what is being justified. No, but ongoing occupation of Palestinians is being justified if you strip for them All right. their right I don't right think violence is revolution. justified. End of sentence. I, I disagree with that. 
International law says that revolutionary action. Uh, you who thought is somebody justified. when there's cars being stolen from them shouldn't have been able to react to that or or or, or have some conflict. Wait, the person doing going back to in our in our in our conversations about the alleged vigilantism in the American context. I was like, no, the person should do nothing. They shouldn't resist. They shouldn't what fight back at all. What are you talking about? We've talked about this before. Cars and vigilant. What are you talking about? The person about? in D.C. who who shot at someone who was stealing their car. You are you that? are you making an analogy of a person shooting a child because they believe they were going on a joyride? The same thing as a group of occupied two million people your in an love open of air prison. Violent. Saying after off years of negotiations that have been thwarted and ignored, peaceful protests. The, the, the march of the protest back when it was 2000, 2014, 2012, 2014, where they were, the peaceful pro Palestinian protesters were shot at by IDF shoulders, uh, soldiers for peacefully protesting against the border wall. You're saying that after all of those efforts, finally there being a moment of largely, some, some of it was illegal and against uh, international law, but some of it, international law validates a Revel, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Ocu Some of it was illegal downplays it a little bit, I think. I'm, I'm happy to stay here and, and sit uh, and go through the names of every single Israeli person that was killed, who was an innocent, and lament that loss of life. I'm happy to sit here and spend an well, hour of our airtime to do that, because I have no hesitation in mourning that. But what I'm not hearing is an equal willingness to talk, to sit in the immorality for a second of keeping two million people, one million children in an open air prison for multiple generations, while somebody who immigrated from Brooklyn or Baltimore know, that's just gets not to being, sit in their grandfather's well, house. That's not. That's just not being justified on our show, at least. It's being, being justified by people out there well, who criticize them. Well, that's what we're talking them, about. So. This is, we do a lot of media criticism, yeah. and this is some of it. Well, I think the but media's this, this approach to this whole issue has been reprehensible. And, and I think that the real, the real tragedy here is all that loss of life that happened on the weekend, including all the lo loss of those precious Israeli lives, would not have happened. And this is what... The Haaretz newspaper in Israel editorial board is saying, and it was reflective of what the Harvard uh, students groups letter also said, would not have happened. That would they're not have solely been in and entirely responsible. Would not have happened. Would not That's be in the situation if Bibi Netanyahu and that right wing government were intent on keeping an occupied population in those conditions until they reached a boiling point. Yeah. And if you want the bloodshed to stop, if you want there to be peace in this region, then you have to address that root causes. And if you just think that bombing the more civilian populations in Palestine to smithereens, as has been just happening— as Yes, I agree with that. Just as bombing more bombing and taking hostages of civilian populations in is Israel it, is it, not going to solve—there's not going to be any res peaceful resolution to this conflict as long as both sides are continuing to engage in retaliatory violence, so they should stop. That's true of the Israeli government. And, they should be very and, careful with what they, they do should, right now. And they need to end the occupation in Gaza. Of course. All right. Well, saying that— We is, don't The policy but, we don't disagree but, 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 on. But, Robbie, so this, is, this is important because Cory Bush's statement— Literally, 80% of it was lamenting, rightly so, the tragedy, tragic loss of life of well, Israeli citizens. I don't think I criticized citizens. your statement. I'm criticizing what they did at this rally and what the Harvard What was my said. caveat, Robbie? All right. You're okay. not talking to me. But she's still getting railroaded yeah. because there was, like, one line saying we need to end the occupation in Palestine. Don't lose sight of the ball. The reason that people are, uh, are mad at this protest is not because of one— woman decided to get up there and say, oh, I, I didn't like, uh, I, I, I'm excited about the revolution, I'm excited about bombs falling in liber the liberation of Palestine. The underlying concern is a shift, What that public opinion will shift in a way that validates a, a shift in, in U.S. policy against the occupation. I mean, people are criticizing the students and the activists there because students and activists are goofy, like cosplaying as Che Guevara's while sipping their lattes, and it's just like a time. A lot of these time groups were Arab criticism, American groups and Palestinian groups. I don't. I think they have a sincere and personally invested interest, and there was a lot of black groups in there in solidarity with them. I think because of the acknowledgement and understanding of what it means to be an oppressed group in the situation. It's also. I think it's very easy to say violence Ireland, is justified and good from your place of of relative extreme safety in America. I mean, I think that's really rich when there's lines of, of, of um, Israelis who have the privilege of getting on the plane and coming back to America, where they also have citizenship, because they are part of a 
occupied uh, settler regime. Yeah. Like, that is, that is part of what we're talking about here. It's also worth noting that Ireland, this isn't about race, white and black, Ireland was one of the only countries in the EU who uh, uh, was objecting to a withdrawal of aid to Palestine over this because they also have their own personal legacy of oppression. Why? They shouldn't give aid to Palestine. They shouldn't just like— Humanitarian we give aid, aid, aid should be Israel. cut to this, this I population? I would cut all the aid to the foreign—I okay. mean, it's their money, not ours, it's but— two million— well, that's totally hypocritical. We should not. We. Sh I mean, they, it's their money. They can do it's whatever they want with it. Humanitarian aid. Well, You're I would not, cut the, all of that the too. The issue isn't humanitarian aid to Israel. Israel's not getting humanitarian aid. They're getting bombs and weaponry from America. They're getting Iron Dome funding. Yeah. Human I would end all of our foreign aid for <laughs> various causes, and I suggest. I suspect the American people agree with me, but. All right. I don't think Amer the American people want a million Palestinian children to starve. Or to be in conditions, Israel has shut off power to to the Gaza Strip. Well, well, that's different. That's that's what they're doing. I'm just, like, it's it's our it's it's our stuff. It does not belong to anyone else anywhere else in the world. It's ours. I I, I don't take that position, but right, you know, well. I, I think this was I think this was useful because I do think it's important. I, I I hope I hope to give some articulation to why there feels to be a reluctance. It's all about this asymmetry that it's getting erased by a both sides are bad argument. And of course, both sides are bad under international law when it comes to killing human beings, but what, uh, sorry, civilians. But what needs to be acknowledged is that an oppressed people under international law does have the right to resist. And sometimes that's gonna take the form of being led by an, an, a terrorist group like Hamas, right. especially when the occupying country has worked overtime to suppress any more legitimate political factions from really having um, uh, dominance. All right. Well, we got to leave it there. Tomorrow on Rising, we will probably be talking about this again. Fantastic. And uh, in other news, we're actually bringing back an old tradition of answering your questions in the form of Rising Ask Me Anything. This is the first I'm hearing about this. You must have made this deal while I was away. You said, uh, this, this help Robbie me. with questions. I'm just a contract employer. This was a management <laughs> decision above my head. No, we will look forward to asking, uh, to answering your questions. Uh, probably most of them will be about Dungeons and Dragons, I assume. Uh, we'll be doing that on YouTube Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss any content. For those of you who like to listen while you're on the go, we are now avail available anywhere you listen to podcasts. See you tomorrow. Take care.